Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, Intel have recently released their new i3 processors, namely the i3-8100 and the 8350K. The one we're going to be focusing on today is the 8100 because it is the cheaper option, and if you were considering something like the 8350K, then it would make sense to spend the little bit extra and buy the i5-8400 because not only is it only about $10 or pounds more expensive, but it comes with a stock cooler as well and should offer slightly better performance, although I am yet to test that out. Even the i3-8100 isn't what I'd consider a budget CPU as of late 2017, because of course you need a Z370 motherboard in order to get it to work right now. Motherboards, cheaper motherboards are coming in early 2018, but if you're looking at building an Intel i3 based budget PC at this very point in time, it may not be the best decision to purchase an i3-8100, and if you do, purchasing a Z370 board for an i3 that can't be overclocked doesn't seem to make much sense. Nevertheless, we will be comparing the i3-8100 with the Ryzen 3 1200 CPU today. The Ryzen 3 is still the CPU I use in my system, and it has been overclocked to 3.9 GHz, which should close the gap between the two. I'm going to say now that I overclocked the Ryzen 3 once again, because at stock speeds, the Ryzen 3 1200 will fall quite far behind the i3-8100 in terms of performance. I'm just putting that out there now, but the 3.9 GHz overclock should close the gap and make the test more interesting. If you buy the Ryzen, you're also more likely to buy a B350 board, and you should, because overclocking is very simple, and like I say, you will get closer to that i3 in terms of performance without having to shell out the extra cash. So without further ado, let's get into it, see how the i3-8100 compares to the Ryzen 3 in a few modern games and CPU intensive tasks. GTA 5 first at 1080p with the high settings and MSAA off. With the i3-8100 the game averaged 93 over a half hour gameplay period with a 1% low of 66 and 0.1% low of 60. Comparing the overclocked Ryzen 3 1200 and you'll see it came close with 87, 63 and 57 respectively, meaning no CPUs caused any stutter. I'd like to point out that at stock the Ryzen 3 1200 can't really keep up in any scenario, so overclocking, which is very easy on the the AM4 platform made for a more competitive set of results. CSGO now, and this is where things swung back slightly in Ryzen 3's favour. The i3-8100 averaged 226 with the low settings, with a 1% low of 165 and a 0.1% low of 99. Now those figures would indicate a little stutter, but I couldn't feel anything during gameplay. With the Ryzen 3, the average came back at 232, a negligible difference, but those 1% and 0.1% low figures were lower at 128 and 83. Intel's new chip dominated dominated in The Witcher 3 though because despite both CPUs putting up great performance, the 8100 shot ahead with 70 frames per second on average with the game's high settings and medium post processing. There were a few moments where the game slowed down, but with percentile figures of 50 and 34, the experience was a pleasant one. The 3.9 GHz Ryzen averaged 62 with percentile figures of 40 and 26 respectively. Gaming performance indicates that the i3-8100 will probably outperform a Ryzen 3 1200 in most games, though you may see the Ryzen overtake on some occasions. Moving on to CPU based benchmarks starting with Cinebench, where the i3-8100 scored 565 in the multi-core test and 152 in the single core test. The overclocked 1200 came very close with 535 and 141. In Premiere Pro, rendering a 30 second 1080p 60fps clip completed in 29 seconds with the i3, but took 39 with the overclocked Ryzen. Not a massive difference, but noticeable if you're in a hurry. The thing is, I'd still recommend the Ryzen 3 1200 at this point in time, because cheaper motherboards are already available and the overclocking potential is pretty good. It's also worth mentioning the guaranteed AM4 socket support until at least 2020. This may change come the new year, but for right now, I'd recommend a Ryzen 3 1200 if you're on a tighter budget. But I can't wait to see what Intel do with their new lineup, and hopefully there'll be a Pentium that comes along at some point too. 
Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video.